Oh, okay. 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 <laughs> so, right. so, I'm Violet. I'm Emma. And I'm Cher And we are Team Antipodes. So, the organization which runs the competition we compete in is called FIRST, and it runs four different levels of competition. Junior FLL for younger elementary school students, FIRST Lego League for older elementary school students and middle schoolers, and FIRST Tech Challenge and FIRST Robotics Challenge for high schoolers. We compete in FIRST Tech Challenge. However, during our eighth grade year at Ocean Shore and our freshman year at Terra Nova, we competed in FIRST Lego League, where teams compete on a four by eight field using a robot that has pre-programmed um, runs which they complete missions. Um, so here's a short video of what our robot did. Here the robot is using sensors to navigate the field and to collect loops to bring back to a home base and score points. Um, if kids were interested in doing robotics um, competitions at the Pacifica school board level, um, this would be the competition that they probably compete in. Another aspect of First Lego League is completing a research project. Every year, students must complete a project relating to that year's theme. And when we compete in FLO, we built a magnetic levitating train. And we, um, ex we um, showed this maglev at various events, such as Maker Faire in 2010. So our, the last year we did FLO, uh, we did well enough to be able to compete at the Open European Championships in Istanbul, Turkey. Uh, it was amazing. We met so many amazing people from all over the world, had a great time. We loved the city. It was incredible. Later that year, me and Violet were exchange students in Australia with another team who compete in a competition called RoboCup. So we competed with them there in RoboCup, and later they went on to become the world championships with that, the world champions with that uh, presentation. And then we also were the state champions uh, in FOL in Tasmania with them. Uh, the thing we now do is FTC, which is four teams presenting on a 12 by 12 field with two different alliances that go up against each other. So the parts uh, change a bit. In FLL, we use mainly Lego, while in FTC, there's a lot more metal and things that we have to change and put together and customize. There's machining so that we can uniquely make all of our own pieces to specifically fit what we're going to do. The programming has also changed. In FLL, you use sort of an icon-based programming uh, that's uh, a little easier to sort of put together where that and sort of tells you what everything you're doing and FTC it becomes a little more complicated with a what we use is robot C which is a text-based programming where you can do more like specialized functions. Also in FTC you have the option of modeling your robot using CAD so here we have um, our robot this year which you can see to the um, right of left of the board um, so we started with the grabber in the back, which used to grab crates, and then um, lift them up into the air using our six-stage forklift, um, and then lots of other gears and motors associated with it. And once we have a ball, we have to collect balls to put into the crates, and those go through this sorter. And if the balls are non-magnetic, then they get sorted um, through the forklift into a crate. And if they are magnetic, then they get sorted the other direction into the magnet ball scorer, where we can score additional points. Then we have the frame and the drivetrain, um, as well as the brain up top, where all the programming goes into and where all of the where all of it goes to control the motors and whatnot. Um, this is what we this we call the um, the fork or the grabber, which we use to collect the bowling ball at the beginning and end of each match, as well as our protective polycarbonate sides. At the beginning of each match, we have to start inside of 18-inch sizing cube. Um, so this is our starting position at the beginning. And then here is a video uh, which we animated using CAD of what our robot um, looks like when it's extending upwards so that people who don't see the robot can see what it does. Um, at the beginning of each match starts with 30 seconds of uh, autonomous, which is pre-programmed. So here you can see um, our robot is driving off of the blue ramp in the back um, turning, and then turning slowly towards the blue bowling ball. So right here you can see all the, the chaos, the four robots on the field. But we've grabbed our bowling ball and are heading to the other corner 
the small corner, and getting the bowling ball and our robot gets us some, a good amount of points during the autonomous run. After autonomous, there are two minutes of tele-op, which is driver-controlled um, competition. And here we are in the front, and we're kind of scooting along trying to grab the crate, um, and then lifting up the crate so that we can drive back and forth to collect balls, which will get <coughs> scooped up into our robot and then later put into the crate. So this is later on in the same match. And um, we are trying to get up onto the ramp because if we get onto the ramp and lift our forklift, um, it gets us more points. And so here we're kind of tipsy and we're trying to raise the forklift before we're completely flat. But um, luckily we have good drivers and <laughs> <laughs> we don't flip over and are able to raise the forklift and get a substantial amount of points for that match. <laughs> So there are different levels. It starts out at the qualifying tournament that you then go on to the regional tournament, which is um, for us is all of Northern California. And <coughs> it just like one or two teams goes on to the <laughs> world championships, which are now being held in St. Louis. Uh, last year we were able to go and compete and we will be going there again this year. Uh, it's incredible. There are, there are so many teams from all the different levels, and last year they even had a free Black Eyed Peas concert one of the nights, <laughs> which was very fun. So having all these great experiences from doing robotics, we have been inspired to reach out to our community and do things such as mentor younger robotics teams, and also have kids drive around our robot to let them get a hands-on view of what <coughs> this different form of um, science and technology can be. And also we did a small event at the Sharp Park Library where we attached a wireless camera to our robot and had kids drive around a robot only seeing through the camera, simulating what it would be like to drive a Mars rover around. We also tried to make corporations aware of the great benefits kids get from, um, from <laughs> participating in science and technology activities. And we do this through giving presentations to the corporations, such as one of our Google Tech Talks. Um, if you want to learn any more information about our team, please visit www.theonerobot.com, and we'll be performing a short demo with last year's robot and answering any questions if you have. <coughs> Thank you for your time. What I mean, you want the cable back? Um, okay. Okay, so is there any questions that we can answer? Oh, I see the robots. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we got it set up really quickly and like the, um, we communicate between the computer and the robot using Bluetooth and use controllers to drive them. <coughs> well, you do that, so when you go to the competitions, there's a, you, there's like a set skill set that you, you have to every different year. So you're making new robots every year? Yeah, yes. so at, in September we get um, a challenge. All of the teams who are registered get a challenge and then the first qualifying tournaments start in November and continue through about January or February. And so you have that, each, every team has about that amount of time to build a robot that is specific to that year's challenge. And so the year that we built this robot, the challenge was um, picking up uh, short batons off of the ground and then scoring them into a rolling goal, which you can see off to the side, hopefully. Um, uh, and then at the end, balancing onto the bridge towards the end. So we're going to hopefully try to show you guys how that works in a minute. But this year, um, the challenge was to try to collect lots of small racket balls that are rolling around onto the field um, and then put them into crates, which we can then lift up. And how, how unusual is it to have girls, girl robot teams? Um, at a lot of the qualifying tournaments that we go to, we're the only all-girl team. Mm -hmm. Although, um, it's not uncommon for, the, for there to be one or two girls, but um, not a lot of girl-dominated teams. Mm -hmm. So here, I don't know if everyone can see it all right, but feel free to stand up or get, to get a closer look. Um, our robot grabbed the rolling goal and is headed towards the bridge. And then balancing, balancing was definitely one of the key points from our competition last year. So we got uh, pretty awesome. <laughs> And during competition, um, it, was a, it was key, there was, there's four robots on the field at the time, keep in mind. So when you're doing this, you're also trying to do this with your alliance partner. So there'll be another robot, maybe with another rolling goal, trying to balance with you at the time. 
So that was sort of how chaotic the competition was last year. <laughs> Is there any other questions? Okay. Oh, yeah. So, how, um, obviously the gears, the pulleys, and all the drives and all that. So, you're, you're, I've seen in the newspaper you're always having fundraisers and stuff, right? Now's the time to pitch for funds. Okay, yeah, and? We got a pretty good uh, sponsor, Jeff Hansen, who's been doing a lot of the robots and us. We're still looking for funds. So, yeah. so if people want to write checks, what do they do? Oh, <laughs> um, we're going to have us uh, place it up on our website uh, where you can donate through PayPal. Right. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you are now. We used to have that set up when we went to Istanbul. Yeah, so they write checks to Terranova High School. They yeah. take it out to the, you know, the memo is out to the girls' robotics team. Okay. Okay. And, so and then you use that to pay for the the robot parts, correct? Yes. Oh yeah. And travel. We still have some expenses left over from buying all the parts, so we're also fundraising for that as well. See. We'll hopefully be having a fundraising night um, at a local restaurant soon. So, and that'll be we're, we'll have that advertised in the the next trip issue, hopefully. So how much of this do you have to machine yourself? Is it like just small parts, or um, is it a fair amount of? We. Okay. Every, every team gets a, set, a box set of parts, a Tetrix kit that has a lot of um, metal channels that are cut to different sizes. Um, but then from that, we customize a fair amount. <laughs> that's, that's and great. Um, this year's that's robot, we customize a lot more than we did with last year's robot. It just depends on what you choose your design to be and what the pieces are. And how comfortable you are with machining. Last year was our first year, so this year now that we have the hang of it, it's a lot more comfortable for us to work with machining. Can you turn that one on? Um, we turned it on to raise the forklift up, but um, and we'll have to turn it off to turn it on to bring it down. But um, we aren't running this one so much since it's our competition robot. We really don't want anything to happen. To <laughs> <laughs> it's just a so if a current uh, Pacifica student wants to do this when they grow up and go to high school, um, what do they do? Um, well, how did you get involved? First? We just sort of started doing it. <laughs> yeah, we, just sort of we did. We did. We decided to do FLL as a team. We were part of a 4-H group, but then um, broke off and became independent. And when we did FLL for a year, um, we actually aged out. We became too old for the competition, and that's why we went to FTC. Um, and we just wanted to continue with robotics, and it's just been a real blast. So definitely get involved with some of the local. And robotics programs. I know there is, um, there was actually a team at Ocean Shore this year, so there is robotics in the community, and we'll, we'll see about the, continuing the high school team as well. Yes. Are you all involved with, are you, have you gone to this after school STEM program at all? Are you inter like teaching that? Or are um, you just I connection with that? teach an after school class at Ocean Shore. Um, I am in the process of setting up a um, summer camp through the after school um, STEM program actually okay. for Pacific and uh, middle schoolers um, regarding natural science and technology as well. And then you, there was a picture of you with some other young, you know, slightly younger oh, yeah. ladies. Um, were they, how do, who are they? Uh, are there they were, groups coming up behind you of young women like that? Uh, they were a team we met when we were doing FLL um, it was their first year and they really didn't know what we were do they were doing and so we just started working with them and um, it's been I think we've been with them for two to three years and they're two and a half. Too, or? No, they're not in Pacifica. Okay. They're uh, they're nearby, but okay. they're not here Palo Alto and uh, We just met them and they wanted some help and so we've been sort of mentoring them ever since <laughs> <Do I? Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> We can't thank you enough no, for thank coming. You. <laughs> thank you. Thank you.